There's nothing in LG's demo room today that I haven't seen before on a show floor, in a hotel suite. Uh, well, I mean, except for that, but <laughs> they won't take the veil off that, so I won't be seeing that today, which means I'm not seeing anything new today. So then you might be wondering, well, gee, Linus, why the heck did you fly all the way to South Korea to make this video? And the answer is that unlike in a controlled show floor environment today, I get to go hands-on, like literally hands-on with a prototype transparent OLED from LG Display, including running my own content on it. So if you guys were thinking, <laughs> there's no way he's gonna hook a PC up to it and game on it. Well, you're clearly new to this channel. So they were a little cagey about how much detail I can give you guys about how it actually works. Transparent OLED is still very much a developing technology, but one of the key benefits of getting off the show floor and into the factory is that I got a chance to sit down with one of the engineers who actually worked on the prototype display that we will be playing with. And between Mr. Sook and the rest of the team here, I was able to gain a lot of insights. Here's the thing, transparent displays are honestly nothing new. In fact, if you have a fancy pants store and you're willing to pay the premium, you can already get them installed in your windows, which allows you to have your, you know, product display and communicate a lot more information about it than you would normally be able to, too. So the demo that they're running here is pretty typical of how they'd expect transparent displays to be deployed in the real world. but. The key difference between a transparent OLED and a transparent LCD is how clear they can make the portions of the display that are off. And I actually can't tell from back here. It's, it's like, it's trippy. I can kind of see like a ghost of the image from back here. I can't tell which parts you guys can see through or not. So here's the thing, LCDs, partly because they have a separate backlight, have more layers that are required for them to display an image, and they also require more circuitry to drive them, which obviously gets in the way of light passing through them. So at this time, you could expect about 10% transparency out of an LCD display. By contrast, OLED only really requires the OLED pixel sheet, which, if you're familiar with the technology, emits its own light, and the circuitry that connects all of the pixels together. So the thin film transistors, or TFT. None of the other optical sheets are actually needed. So when I asked Mr. Sook to tell me about one challenge in creating a transparent OLED, he laughed and then his answer was immediate. He said one of the biggest challenges in achieving this level of transparency was figuring out how to align the circuitry that drives the pixels behind the self-emissive pixels. That way, you can make much better use of the available space for transparency. So to better understand then how a transparent display works, I asked then, well, what exactly is the difference between the OLED pixel sheet in the transparent display and then the one that would be in your normal OLED TV at home? And apparently, it's pretty negligible. So my follow-up question, of course, then was, if I took my TV from home, you know, off the wall and started peeling layers off the back of it, could I make it transparent? I mean, if you've ever tried this with an LCD, you'll know that it actually kind of works. That's how iBuyPower does those trippy side panels on some of their computers. And the answer was unfortunately no. To make it clear, pardon the pun, it's not so much that they leave out the back opaque layer, and it's more like that they punch thousands of holes through the entire displays. Now it's time for the fun stuff. So I ended up with one of the heaviest bags that I have ever taken on a trip. The thing about these kinds of like demo grade displays is you're never really sure what exactly is behind the curtain or under the cabinet. You don't know, you know what it takes to drive them. So I came equipped with everything that I could possibly think of, um, but I think given how straightforward this one ended up being, um, honestly, we could use either. So we could use our Xbox One, 
Uh, or I actually brought a full-fledged gaming PC equipped with a GTX 2080 Ti. Tell you what, why don't you guys leave a comment below letting me know which one you think I should use. I'm just kidding, by the time I read your comments I'll have made the decision like ages ago. So we're gonna go with the gaming PC. All right, so they actually pre-hooked us up an HDMI cable that plugs into just sort of this gray box here. All right, so we can go ahead and hook up to that. And also, I think we can probably get our, our jewelry display out. What do you think, Dennis? Does this suit me? Dazzling? Thank you. You know what? I'm going to wear it for the rest of the video. Yeah, what do you think? Is this a good look for me? You know, while we were shooting this, Dennis asked me, hey, do you think that stuff's real? You don't know. All right, so we're almost ready to fire it up, but first I gotta figure out how to use the LG Factory SVC RemoCon. Look at this thing. Like, what is HDMI hot, USB hot? It's got all kinds of stuff on it. Hey, look at that, okay, it works just like a normal one. So let's go ahead and turn on our gaming PC. Hey, that was easy. Wow, this looks ridiculous. Dennis, you told me I looked dazzling. I know, someone told me I looked dazzling. You can see through it, but like just barely because it's so it's so bright like it's basically the same as an OLED TV Like isn't that, isn't that crazy? Like can you see that? And then as soon as I go over here It's like boom window or should I say windows because it's so windows window window no <laughs> This is so weird. It's like the game is floating in the air like from your from your angle. Can you? So have you seen how much you can see through it from behind? Like you can actually see right through it from the back as well. Is there on the screen? Oh yeah. Yeah, like the game's running. Here, come around, come around. Don't cut. Like that's what's on the screen right now. And then if you go around behind, it's like basically completely clear. It's nuts! The trippiest thing about this is that even when the image is relatively bright, like what we're looking at right now. Can I open this? Yeah, I can open this. It's really about where your eyes focus that determines sort of what you can see and what you can't see. Like when I'm focused on the image in front of me, I can barely even tell that it's clear. But if I look behind it, where obviously my, my game goes out of focus, like I can see what's behind it. I mean, this opens up so many possibilities for changing the viewer's experience. Like obviously, it's not the kind of thing that would be applicable to movies, or I mean even gaming, we're just fooling around right now. But for signage or for, you know, custom experiences, it's really cool. You know what we should do? I should try and play from the back. Like I can only kind of see a ghost of the image. Remember how the challenge here was getting the electronics aligned with the self-emitting pixels, right? I mean, looking at how thin this is, like this bezel is nothing to do with how thin the actual glass is. Like would it even, would it be possible to create one that works on both sides? where you could actually, you know, you could turn it clear. Like imagine that as a head-to-head -head gaming experience, right? Where you've got one person playing on one side, you've got one person playing on the other side, and then, you know, after the match is over, you can, you can see each other. Or if you focused hard enough, like past the glass, you could, like, you could see the other player. You couldn't see what they're doing, because like I can barely make out what's on the other side of the display, but like that, the possibilities are just kind of endless, right? Oh, okay, I think part of the problem is that I'm trying to go left and I'm going right. <laughs> yeah, I got no idea what's going on. <laughs> this was a better idea on paper. <laughs> ah, yes, well, that is significantly better. Knowing how it's assembled, I shouldn't be that surprised, but I still am by the, the vibrancy of the color and the brightness of the image. Like you think about, you know, oh, it's a clear display. Like you wouldn't really expect that. But honestly, I think the only thing really preventing this from looking like a normal OLED TV right now is that the wall behind us 
is kind of gray. Actually, new idea. So LG says they can kill the lights in here and we can just unplug these things. Okay, do you guys wanna go ahead and do that? So this should give us an idea of what this would look like with a much more black background. Nice! Oh, that's crazy. Look at this. So even the parts where we've got the gray and white background, you can barely see it. Like, can you see me right now? That's crazy. So like, imagine this. What if you could have a TV that maybe used like a secondary layer or something, like some kind of polarization filter or like, I don't even know, where you could convert between transparent and opaque. You could easily convince me that this is just a TV. So theoretically, the closer you get, the easier it should be to see through, like a, like a screen door. But in practice, actually, I find the closer I get, the more the brightness of the, of the OLEDs just kind of overwhelms my eyes. Like I can't actually see through it. Like, can you see me at all? Hello, I'm waving. For me, the exciting thing here is just as this continues to, to develop, like what kinds of possibilities we're gonna unlock? I mean, even things that have been imagined already, like smart mirrors, for example. Are we better off with a two-way mirror in front of a conventional display? Or, you know, what if we did have uh, a transparent display over top of a conventional reflective back? I don't know. I mean, let me know in the comments below what you guys foresee for a technology like this in the future. And while you guys are down below, by the way, you can check out LG's dedicated site to OLED technology. So they're gonna have information about OLEDs, content about OLEDs, um, articles that are written about OLED technology. I think right now it's Korean only, but I believe they're gonna have an English version coming sometime in the near future. So guys, you can check that out below. And that's honestly pretty much it for the video today. If you guys disliked it, you can hit that button, but if you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, or maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the, no, I'm just kidding, you can't buy one of these yet, but, but later, later. It's, it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. While you're down there, you can check out our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one, and our community forum.